Hi folks, this is awesome. With five axis machining, there's three plus two where you're just positioning the part to get access to different sides and do work. It's what frankly most five axis machining is. The other extreme is the crazy, true simultaneous five axis kind of impeller type work, which again, very uncommon and not always needed. But there's this kind of middle ground where you benefit from having a five axis tool pack. And in this case, what I've been trying to figure out is a, the right way to program a Fusion 360 3D contour. It's a 3D operation, which makes it easy to program, but you've got this option to add in multi-axis with shaft and holder detection. There's a ton of reasons this can be really helpful, both in this case where we just wanna use a shorter tool to machine this feature in there, but also what I like to call a corner pick, where you're trying to machine a really small feature on an inside pocket and you just don't have the ability to get a tool that's in small enough diameter at the diameter to length ratio. So. Let's show how we started out with this tool path, which worked but was not what I was looking for, and ended up with this. The first time we used 3D Contour with 5-axis was back when we did our V8 engine block video, and it's a really good example of where this tool path shines. We need to machine out these areas for the crank. Our parts being held like this with the z-axis pointed up. The first one I can easily get to with an end mill. And actually I was able to get to the second one as well. But then how do you machine this third one? That's where 3D Contour is awesome. 3D Contour. I've got a 3 inch ball mill selected. Under the Passes tab, I'll check Avoid to Touch Surfaces. I'll select the feature. Choose Touch. Make sure the tool containment is set to tool outside boundary and just click OK. The awesome thing about 3D Contour is it gives you steps to program it in. So here I've got a three axis tool path that has two problems. Number one is only three axis, so our tool is obviously going to crash. The other problem is the tool path goes down too deep. So let's fix the heights first. Under heights, I'm going to say change it from model bottom to selection. I'll pick the bottom edge of that feature and I'll offset it by a formula. Tool diameter divided by two. Since it's a ball end mill, I want it to be able to go down the radius of the tool past our lowest feature. And next, under passes, choose multi axis tilting. This is awesome. This is where Fusion takes a three axis tool path and adds multi axis tilting ability subject to shaft and holder detection. When you checked multi axis tilting, Back on the tool tab, it checks shaft and holder with clearances for both the shaft of the cutting tool as well as clearances for the holder. You have to have your tool stick out and your holder modeled correctly for this to work or not cause a collision. Back on the passes tab, I'm gonna make one change. Maximum tilt is how far over the machine can tilt. And 90 degrees would be like that. I don't want it to go that far. So let's see what happens if we just tip the part over a 60 degrees. Click OK. And just like that, we have a five axis tool path. By the way, if you're wondering why it's all in red and showing collisions, that's just because we haven't done an adaptive roughing strategy to first remove some of the uh, stock material that's modeled. So that was back when we had our trunnion on our VM3. We've now got a UMC 750 and I'm trying to learn better five axis skills. I wanted to look into this sort of corner pick technique, whether it's for this outside feature here or for it's a you know, really small tool machining a tight inside fill it in a deep pocket. So when I first programmed it, very similar process to the V8 engine, just selected my geometry and under passes, I have multi-axis tilting, set the max to 30 degree. Uh, you will notice that this tool path behaves very differently when you're using bull nose end mills versus ball nose end mills has to do with how the tool is able to present the full radius of the cutting edge to the geometry. And there wasn't anything inherently bad or wrong with the tool path. Simulation looked fine. It starts down and then quickly as it moves beyond the radius of that tool, it shifts into the shaft and holder detection to use the radius of this helical bullnose end mill to surface the tool path in. And you'd probably want to reduce the step downs for a finer surface finish, but that's not the goal here. I'm just trying to get the toolpath settings right so that I'm happy with how it moved. And here's what kicked my butt. The toolpath wasn't so bad. It was the linking moves and that jerkiness that I hate. And I thought the machine can do better. Heck, the machine's doing better in the cut. Why is the linking move part so bad? 
And shout out to Lawrence over at 3D Tech Draw for helping understand the settings to improve this toolpath. We've got to make some changes to both the linking tab as well as the passes tab. In the linking tab, retraction policy. If you're like me, coming from a three axis world, you may not have spent that much time paying attention to, but shortest path is the option that we want here, which moves the tool the shortest possible distance in a straight line between paths. So this graphic does a great job of showing it. Instead of lifting up to your retract plane that you defined in your heights plane over and then down, it's just dive bombing straight for the next feature. There are some concerns and risks here, which it mentions in the warnings. And the short answer is under high feed rate mode, we're going to override it by always using high feed. I think it's a little bit of a misnomer because really what you're doing is using G1 or programmed feed rates rather than G0. This avoids the risk on some machines of doing a dog leg move and having the machine motion look different than the cam toolpath, at least on the linking moves. After I initially did that, it still wasn't better. And the reason goes back to the passes tab under maximum tool axis sweep. And this is where Lawrence really helped because I wouldn't have thought this applied to the linking move, but because we're using a high feed mode, it does. And basically what we need to do is reduce the maximum tool axis sweep from a larger value, it was previously five degrees, down to a finer value of 0.25 degrees. This prevents one of the axes from getting too far ahead and having to wait for the other one to catch up, which is what causes what appears to be a jittery motion. So reducing the value in that maximum tool axis sweep gives us more points and that helps the control move better and it gives us a really nice fluid motion. So folks, hope you learned something. Thank you for watching. Card here to the NYC CNC resource page where we're compiling and keeping today all the stuff that we're learning, the tips and tricks so that you've got a repository. And that when you learn nuggets of information like this, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You've got a place to go. And if you're looking for better speeds and feeds, make sure to check out our new company, Proven Cut, a video speeds and feeds library. We're super excited. The feedback that we've been getting is amazing. As always, folks, take care. See you soon.